A component of the capital asset pricing model is the equity risk premium. And when an advisor is working with a client and they're estimating how much money they'll have 20 or 30 or 40 years in the future, they have to estimate what the equity risk premium is going to be. What should an advisor do to be able to estimate the equity risk premium? The fundamental idea of the capital asset pricing model is that it's not the risk of a security or a portfolio for that matter that really is related to the risk premium, but the way it interacts when the whole world is falling apart. <laughs> the formalism is something called beta, which is a measure of the expected response in the return of a security or a portfolio to a change in the return on the broad, broad markets. And as I say, I like to think of that as bonds and stocks although in most of the literature it's stocks, and most of the risk comes from stocks, of course. But what you should be rewarded for is the risk you cannot get rid of by diversifying. You know, if you can get rid of it by diversifying, why should you be rewarded for it? Because, you know, it's so easy to diversify. That's kind of the fundamental notion. And, and what is that risk? It's the risk of the economy going bad, of the markets going down because of concern about future econ economic issues. It's the big risk, and that's the risk, and somebody has to carry that risk. In order to make capitalism work, somebody's got to bear that risk, but investors can diversify the idiosyncratic risk that's unique to an industry or unique to a firm within an industry by diversifying, and what you're left with is that big risk, that economy-wide risk, and that's where, in an efficient capital market, the reward should come. And how do you estimate how much premium the market is going to give you for accepting that risk? You have to do it very carefully. <laughs> that's, that's the big question. What is that, that risk premium? And you know, one way to think about it is, well, what's the risk of that overall market? And then what seems to be a plausible premium per unit of risk. And then if you estimated the risk and a plausible premium per unit of risk, it's easy to figure out what the premium is on that risk. You just multiply those two numbers. Uh, the question is, what is that premium per unit of risk? That's why I like to frame it. I'm just reframing your question. I'm not answering it. And, and that's a very, very difficult question. You can look at history, but in a real sense, we don't have a lot of history. Uh, yeah, we've got 100 years, but the world has changed in those 100 years. This is not the world of 1918. You know, and there's the risk in America, and there's the risk in, in Europe, and what you'd like is sort of a global risk. Um, and it's just very hard to say, well, in today's world, looking forward, what kind of risk is the fundamental global risk? And how much premium do investors require to bear that risk collectively? That's the question. What's the answer? <laughs> you know, people have rules of thumb. And there's something called the Sharpe Ratio. I didn't call it that, somebody else did. <laughs> which, which measures the risk, the expected return over, over riskless assets per unit of that risk uh, for the whole market. So the sharp ratio for the market as a whole, uh, if you knew what that was, and maybe that has a little more stability through time, um, because maybe through time the global risk has changed, and with it the premium has changed, but maybe the premium per unit of global risk has been a little more stable. So perhaps you can look at historic data and get a feel for that.